Today, I'm going to show you how to quickly link Notion and Google Calendar, and this is a two-way sync. So if you create an event in Google Calendar, it's going to show up in Notion. And then let's say you wanted to change the date or the name of it in Notion, it will also reflect that change over in Google Calendar. So it's a true two-way sync. It also handles things like recurring tasks. One of the things that came up in my mind was how is this integration possible when you can have perpetually recurring tasks in Google Calendar, where you say, hey, I want you to remind me of this thing every Friday for infinity, basically. How is Notion going to handle creating a page for that? Well, they address this with this integration that I'm gonna show you in this video today and many other questions that came up for me. And it's a very simple solution. You know, unfortunately, Notion was talking about releasing this integration back in March of 2022 with their synced databases update. And they implemented lots of synced databases, but they didn't implement the one that a lot of people care about and the one that they demoed, which is Google Calendar. You know, so they haven't addressed this and there have been third parties that have stepped up to the plate. So today I'm going to share the best third party that I've come across and used. I've tried a few different methods. I've tried hooking it up with Zapier or make.com and these sorts of things work, but they're very cumbersome and sometimes not reliable. So what I'm going to show you today is Notion Automations. And Notion Automations is just focused on one task and that is syncing Notion and Google Calendar and doing it extremely well. So as I scroll down through this page, you'll notice that they have this simple pricing. It's $5 per month. It's as simple as that, guys. This is the price you pay for a true, solid, two-way synchronization between Notion and Google Calendar, and you can rely on it. It's a very good uh, connection, and I haven't had any issues with it. I'm not sponsored by them. In fact, I pay them, so they aren't paying me. <laughs> uh, I pay them, so if anything, uh, I'm held accountable by that when I'm making a video like this. So I hope that this video helps you. And that is my true intention with this video. It's to help you and show you how to connect Notion and Google Calendar in a reliable way. And this is the best way I've found. So let's jump into it. So first things first, we have some prerequisites. You're going to want to have a Notion database where these things can live. And my database is called Actions. This is my productive brain. And if you haven't seen my productive brain videos, I've created a system that allows you to quickly capture your tasks, notes, and bookmarks. And now it's going to be enhanced by this Notion automations here, because now I can just enter something in Google Calendar and it will get added to my tasks. Now my tasks are called actions. And here I don't have any actions because this is just a demo account. But if I add an action quickly here, I could add something like create a Notion Automations tutorial. And this will get added to some different views, like my processing page, where it's going to tell me this task needs more information. And it's also going to get added to my plan page once I give it an action date. So let's say the ninth, let's go to the plan page. And as you can see, I have this nice calendar that I can drag these actions between. But let's imagine that I wanted to connect Google Calendar with this system so that I can process those tasks that get added to my Google Calendar. And I can also drag them around the calendar within Notion, change things about them in Notion. Well, this is how you're going to do it. You have to have a database and it has to have a date similar to this one that I've shown you. So actions database with an action date, okay? It's just a simple date property. If you're not familiar with date properties, definitely check out my databases tutorial. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the upper right hand corner right now. So if you're new with Notion, you can use that tutorial to watch and learn about the different functionalities within a database. A date property is very simple and I have a full chapter in that video going over that. So date and that is pretty much all you need. And then you need to create, well, you don't need to, but it's beneficial to create a calendar view of that particular database. We're going to also need a Google Calendar account. Here I have a fresh Google Calendar account and I'm going to add in an event here just because I wanna see if this syncs over to Notion immediately once we hook up Notion Automations. So I'm going to call this one Workout or 45 minutes 
and I'm going to add a time to this and the time we'll add is going to be 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Perfect, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And we're going to hit save. And now I'm going to click on this and I'm actually going to edit it. We'll make it a recurring task just to show you how that works if you do have a repeating task. So where it says does not repeat, I'm gonna say weekly on Friday and hit save. So now workout for 45 minutes is pretty much for every Friday for the foreseeable future. Now let's open up Notion Automations, notion-automations.com. And I'm gonna hit start syncing now. I'm gonna hit connect Google Calendar. And I'm going to select the Google account that I wanna connect. We're going to check these boxes here and then hit continue. Then at this part, I can select the different calendars that I want to port in. So if I go back over to Google Calendar, you'll notice that I have Carter Sirach here, but then I also have birthdays, reminders, and tasks. So if I don't want to see like holidays, for instance, and birthdays and all these other things, then I don't want to select those over here. So now that I've selected that calendar, I can go ahead and hit continue. Now, if you're not well versed in Notion and you want to use their template, you can do that. Okay, you can hook this up with their Notion template and you can quickly duplicate it using this button. But I'm going to go ahead and skip this, assuming that you guys are using your own Notion workspace. And now it says, let's connect to your Notion account. So I'm gonna hit connect your Notion account and let's connect. Now here you're gonna wanna make sure that it has the right Notion account selected. And then you're going to hit select pages. And you're probably not going to see your page right off the bat in here, but that's okay because we can link it up in a moment. I'm going to show you how to do that. You're just going to give it access to whatever you feel comfortable giving it access to. If the page is within one of your high level pages, then just select like home for instance. For me, my actions page is within my home page. So I'm just going to allow access to my home page. And here we go. Now let's connect your Notion database that will be synced. Connect to Notion database. Are you using our template? I'm gonna say no. Add Notion automations connection to your database. So this is very simple. We're just gonna go over to Notion. We're gonna find our database. If you're using the productive brain, you can just go to actions. And here in actions, you can click up on these three dots. And here we have the connection of Notion automations already. But if you don't, just hit add connection and type Notion automations. And it should pop up here and you can click on it. I'm not seeing it because I already have it selected. Now let's go back to Notion automations and continue. And once you're connected up, just hit continue. And then we're going to have to add two properties to your Notion database. We're going to add date and we're also going to add Notion Automations event data. So I'm just going to copy this text right here where it says Notion Automations event data. I'm gonna head back over to my actions database and I'm going to go ahead and create that in here. So to create a property, you have to unlock your database if it's locked. Probably won't be unless you're using the productive brain. And you're going to click on these three dots, go into properties and hit new property. And then here we're just going to select text and we're gonna paste that name that we copied, Notion Automations Events Data. Then just click into some empty space and now that is all set up. And let's just momentarily change this action date to just date, just so it can identify it. And we're gonna go back to Notion Automations and continue. Here it wants the Notion database link. So let's go back to our actions database, hit share, copy link, and then go back to sync calendar with Notion and paste this. And then we're going to hit add database. And then you'll get this confetti, meaning that you set it up correctly. And you're going to hit continue from here. Now it asks, are there events you do not want to sync? And this is a very good feature because there might be things in Google Calendar that you don't wanna see in Notion. So make sure to go through. And if you wanna do that, you can hit yes. I'm going to hit later for now. One last thing, do you want to automatically add Notion page link to your event description? This just makes it easier to traverse between Google Calendar and Notion by using that link. I choose not to do this. I think it's messy and if I have an event that shares multiple contacts and I wanna share that event, I don't want people to see that description. For me, it's a no. Now let's test it out. I'm gonna hit test synchronization and it says, boom, we've just synced three calendar events in your Notion 
work out for 45 minutes. All right, now right off the bat, I noticed that it selected the wrong date property here. So we have to go in and we actually have to change some settings on this. Uh, we can change the date property that it's referencing, but we'll have to get into the back end of Notion automations. So what you can do is check out now if you're interested in moving forward with this. You can get your money back within 14 days if you aren't satisfied. So you can definitely do that, but check out now and I'll meet you on the other side. So this is the back end dashboard of Notion automations, and this is where you can turn on and off the calendar sync. So I just have it on right now. And what you're gonna wanna do is go into field mapping. And if it didn't select the proper date, you can go ahead and select date. And you can also select the event name so that that's reflected properly. Here you can go to sync settings and you can change some of the more granular settings within this sync. So this is the syncing time frame. It's going to pick a window of time that it's going to sync from. So this is going to sync two days behind. So what's going on two days in the past? And it's also going to sync one month ahead. So it's not giving me anything that's too far into the future if I don't want it to. But you can change this setting as much as you want. Obviously the one year ahead is going to be a much slower sync if you have lots of different events that it has to pull from. I don't see any point in seeing days that are in the past within my syncing. So I just have that on two days behind. Here you can turn some settings on and off, but I have all of these off by default. And under event filtering, I've set up some filters. So if the event title contains birthday, or the event title contains B-Day, I don't want it to show. And the reason for this is I have tons of birthdays within my Google Calendar, and I don't want all of those to get ported over into my daily tasks or my action calendar in Notion, because that's more about focusing on my daily actions than it is keeping up with my personal life or distracting myself with what's going on with somebody else at that time. Now, if I go down to default Notion values, you'll notice that I've selected a default calendar icon that shows up next to each Notion task. And I've also set up some default properties for it. So if it's in my Google Calendar, I'm going to be marking it as a meeting if it's coming from my Google Calendar. It's also going to start as incomplete because I haven't completed it yet. Now I can change these things as I go. And these are really on the Notion side. There's nothing here that gets transferred over to Google Calendar other than up here where I have field mapping, the event name and the date. As you can see here, I have my calendar and as I selected, there is that icon here uh, next to anything that was from Google Calendar. So I have a workout on a daily basis that pulls in from Google Calendar and that pulls in for all of these different days here, as you can see. It's also pulling in my haircut that I have scheduled and dropping off Lauren's car as well as the furnace install that I've got going this weekend. So all of these tasks are pulled directly from Google Calendar. And if I were to move it, it would move that workout and I would have a double workout on the 10th. I'm gonna move it back because I don't want it work out twice on the 10th. So that is pretty much how you set this up. Again, like if you wanted to change this name to workout for arms, and then you wanted to change this one to workout for legs, you could do so and that would reflect that change in google calendar almost instantaneously and if it doesn't reflect you can just go back to notion automations and hit sync now and it will go ahead and sync things up for you i hope this tutorial was insightful i hope it was helpful and if it was please leave a like we'll see you in the next one